Attention hipsters, another terrible old technology is back. Of course, we're not hipsters because we've been using cassettes since the year dot on our 8-bit computers. And last year, we saw a brand new cassette player come out in retail shops by Akai. Yes, it's just a, somebody who's bought the Akai name and is using it as a kind of zombie company. And I reviewed this unit, which actually has a remote socket, which makes it very useful for 8-bit computers. Um, not C64 or Atari. Obviously, they have their own cassette decks. But for the Amstrad, MSX and BBC, um, which need the remote, you can go out and buy this unit for about £15. And yes, it's not terribly well built. And look, at that's already scratched because that plastic is so cheap already. But it works. It's not Fidelity. But then again, the decks built into your Spectrum and Amstrad weren't Fidelity either. In short, if you haven't got an old and original one, you can't service a, a decent old unit, then this works perfectly well and I, I do keep an eye out in the supermarkets about what's uh, what's available and there's been talk about new cassette units and and things available and I was in Tesco in the week and I saw this for 17 pounds it's a retro personal cassette player and recorder it's trying to be a Walkman without saying Walkman and why is this important because clearly it won't have a remote socket on it well, it's important potentially for Spectrum owners who don't need that remote socket. A very small portable tape recorder that you could use for your Sinclair Spectrum if you don't have solid state audio or you just want to load in your copy of Operation Wolf for nostalgic reasons or Treasure Island Dizzy or what have you. In theory, plug this into your Spectrum and for £17 you're happily loading in uh, your original tape games. And I thought I'd take a look at it and see, is it suitable? And indeed for Amstrad and MSX as well, because actually I lived a long time with my CPC with a tape recorder that didn't have a remote socket. It's only really important for machines like the BBC where they stop the tape to draw the loading screen. Actually on the Amstrad, the only problem comes with multi-load games where you've got to be on the ball stopping the tape recorder. On the front, we've got this fetching. It's a... Uh, picture of the unit it's a groove e groove e do you see what they've done there groovy retro personal cassette player and recorder built-in speaker which of course Wilkman's wouldn't have had am fm radio that could be useful as a little radio on its own integrated microphone okay earphones included wonder if they're stereo in fact i'm wondering if this unit is stereo at all because None of these units I've ever seen actually are. On the back, we have features, cassette player and recorder, AM, FM, radio, one touch recording. When I say, when I say touch, I'm sure that actually means one press down recording. Built-in speaker and microphone, 3.5mm stereo earphone jack. Hmm, is the tape recorder stereo? I'm still saying not. Detachable belt clip requires two LA batteries not included. Micro USB power input. I've got um, cable not included. I'm going to power it from that. Use. Oh, 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 oh. It's got the warning that you used to see on all cheap Walkmans. Use 60 minute cassettes for optimum performance because we've put a cheap mechanism in this. A groovy live in rice slip but this unit is made in China. And there's nothing else on, on there, really. It's a quite a, well, quite a nice little retail box. As with the other cassette recorder, I'm really not sure who these things are aimed at because they don't have us in mind, do they, with our 8-bit computers. These are aimed at general consumers, perhaps who still have a few cassette players left over, um, cassette tapes, rather, left over. Anyway, let's open it up. Oh, there we go. That's the box gone. It's quite a nice retail package, actually. But then again, it's important when you're uh, in a shop, isn't it? And they had other things like CD players as well from the same people. Look, they've sealed that down to stop shoplifting because shoplifters are going to really go in and uh, nick these. Also, it had one of those tags on it. So I had to get that taken off the counter. So we've got some quality earphones there, if you can see. Oh, I bet they're good. 
but they are stereo. They are stereo. And in we go to find what lies within. First of all, is that, is that white? Because the unit is actually white on the packet and it doesn't say anywhere. Um, it could vary. Uh, it's, it's silver. We have a silver unit and the first thing that screams out at me is cheap. Very cheap. Very cheap indeed. It does actually look like a, a Walkman. Um, oh, so yeah, I mean, you almost expect to see a Bush logo on there or something from a, from a low end personal, personal stereo. It's got AM on it though. Um, useful for listening to the, I was saying the cricket, but it's no long wave on there. Um, it's yeah, that's how you open it up. Um, volume control on the top there tape or radio am fm i assume tape also means when it's when it's off if you see what i mean because that's going to be either the radio one or the tape mechanism there's no eject it just does you have to pull it out like that and the speakers on the oh now now just a little point here i don't know if you can see that but the speaker is there and the tape goes there now, that speaker could be magnetically shielded, but would you really want a speaker that close to your cassette tape? Um, I don't think I would. I don't think I would want that closing like that. And if you remember the Tandy dictaphones back in the day, they usually had the speaker in the back or down on the side, separate from the tape, because magnets and tapes... And again, if you can see, really do not mix. That is going to be hard up against the tape when it closes. Right, let's get this thing powered up and see what treats we have to behold. The unit has a USB input on the old fashioned. Uh, it said mini, but it's not. It's a modern mini type. There we go. Uh, not the very latest one, but the, I can't remember the name of it. The one all the Android phones had until recently, but not this one, which I assume was a mini, but isn't. Right, so we're powered up. Just turn the radio on. Does it turn on? Oh, oh, we have, there we go. The aerial has to be on the inside, or it must use the headphones. Yeah, the FM tuning ain't great uh, on the speaker anyway. That's AM. Where I'm also picking up. The, yeah, the radio performance. Oh, we've got something. No, the radio performance is absolutely diabolical. Right, look, let's, let's try a cassette. Let's try a music cassette. Here we go, one of Ricardo Autobahn's finest, the Cuban boys. I was surprised they were releasing uh, cassettes as late as 1999, 2000. But uh, there you go. All right. Oh. Right. Power bank turned off. Well, it's got an auto stop. I'll give it that. That is nasty. That tape. Oh, dear. That's, that's horrible. Right. Let's... Uh, Cut this quickly for copyright reasons if it is it playing? Is it playing? Station announcer, station announcer. Right, now comes the moment of truth. I'm gonna plug in my uh, headphones. Not the inter actually no, I'm gonna plug in the included headphones to be fair rather than load it up with uh, decent headphones. But it appears to work. I mean the mechanism is cheap as chips. It's not fair. We get a generous length there. Alright. Plug in there. Now you're gonna have to trust me on this because there's no way I can actually tell you what if it's gonna come back in stereo. 
I think it's going to play back in mono. I really do, because I believe they're only making mono heads apart from Tascam, who appear to have got old stock. All right. Oh, that's gone off again, because I wasn't using it. Mono as anything. And these uh, headphones are the really, really tinny. Oh, it sounds... Oh, it's like having audio played down telephone to you when you're on hold. Um, let me put some proper headphones. Let me get my headphones off my camera and try those. I'm sorry, I can't, I, there's no way I can convey that to you through earphones. I'm going to try these proper Sennheiser HD25 Mark IIs. Might be a bit too much for this thing to power, but we will try. Oh, it's horrible. It's all trebly. That is horrible. And when the volume control is down, there's a buzzing and a hiss as well. But we're not buying this thing for fidelity. I just wanted to test if it was any good for music, which evidently it's it's not. But, you know, let's be fair. That's not, like I said, I'm not reviewing it for audio fidelity. I'm reviewing it for its ability to play back computer cassettes. And that's what we're going to have to go and test in a moment. Does it have auto stop on rewind? Notice it says screaming at you. <laughs> Help. It, let's just see how close that cassette is. Oh, it's right on the speaker. It's right on the speaker. It's horrible. The mark of a good cassette tape is the eject mechanism, right? Okay, that's standard for a cheap burst of stereo. But getting the cassette out, and that hub is right on that speaker there. It just, that's not acceptable. That is no way. I don't care if they say that's shielded or what, which it probably isn't at this price. It's uh, dreadful. Oh, and there's the built-in microphone, by the way, which I assume is auto-leveling. But um, that's going to be rubbish and of no interest. Of course, what we're actually interested in is, does it load your copy of Dizzy? Let's have a listen to it. Ah! Go in! No, 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 no. Just, just go in. Oh. Of course, the unit comes with a manual, and it's in English. There's no badly Chinese uh, translated instructions in here. It does clarify the radio operation does rely on FM for the earphone cable, which means the idea of having a speaker built into the thing is completely useless because you're gonna to have to have the headphones plugged in. And if you've got the headphones plugged in, the speaker won't work. So yeah, that's useless. It also points out that on AM, if you're using the USB power supply, there will be interference. So it's on FM, you can't listen unless you listen to the headphones. On AM, you can listen through the speaker, but um, you won't get any reception if you're on USB. It also points out, do not have the batteries plugged in. It also points out, do not have the batteries inserted when the USB is plugged in, i.e. possibly the power could leak through to the batteries, start to charge and then cause them to leak. Oh, that's a bit of a, yeah. And uh, as a final thing here, we've got the specifications. It tells you all about the frequency response. Doesn't say what for, but I'm going to assume the entire unit is bottom frequency response is 125 hertz. That's fine. Top frequency response, 6.3 kilohertz. 6.3 kilohertz. That's basically AM radio response in Europe. Anyway, so yeah, that's uh, that's not spectacular. So it's a mono head and you're only going to get up to 6.3 kilohertz audio. So let's get this loading on my Spectrum. It's all plugged in, powered by USB from my Mac as that was closest. And that mechanism is really horrible. It's horrific. 
especially when you're using it one-handed. Right, okay, off we go. Treasure Island Dizzy in the cassette recorder. Play has been pressed, and off we go. Hang on, what's going on here? The picture interference, have a play round. Do you know what's going on? Let's get it to the tones. Oh dear, oh dear, no, no, stop this, stop this now. Right, I'm going to try this on batteries instead rather than the USB power. And this time it is loading. Goodness knows what was going on there. Um, that didn't look healthy for a Spectrum at all. Right, so we'll leave this to load. Now, my stopwatch says we're getting to the pause to the point where the game should be loading in. One curious thing about Treasure Island Dizzy on the 48K is it continues to play tones after it's crashed. I was going to say it continues to play tones in after the game's loading the 48K. I've always assumed that's extra stuff for 128K. Right, so I tried this three more times at different volume levels and different power supplies. And no, I can't get Treasure Island Dizzy to load on this device. I think we can safely say it's not a good machine for loading from. Let's try my Sony, just straight off on standard settings. And you can already hear those tones are louder and clearer. This is a cassette deck that's never been properly serviced since it was new. It's had the heads cleaned, but nothing else, because the spindles still pull like trains, so there's no point going and fiddling around. Game should be loading in a second. And there we go. And as I said, you can hear those tones in the background before I stop the tape recorder. First time, volume maximum, just works, which is what you want. I think we need some more analysis. So I've brought the tape recorder into my studio, and we're going to look at three different tape recorders. The Groovy, the Sony Mono cassette recorder from the 90s for computers, and my Sony Hi-Fi separate from the QS range, which, although the tape heads might not like it, it's a pretty good Hi-Fi separate. So this is the Cuban Boys here, and I can't play much of this audio, if any. The Groovy is on the left, the Sony Mono cassette recorder in the middle, and the Sony Hi-Fi separate on the right. And you can see all the bottom end is missing from the Groovy. I've equalised the levels, but the Groovy is way down on the other two. Just straight out of the socket. So it's got a very low level, which cassette computers won't like. And this is not pleasing to your ears. It does better at the top end than the Sony cassette computer cassette recorder does. But, um, yeah, not by much. And probably if I tune the Sony deck up, it would perform better. But it doesn't need to. And the Sony Hi-Fi separate at the end. It's a nice unit. It has ceramic cassette hold and lots of features. Single deck. None of that fancy um, auto-reverse stuff. It just It's just a good cassette recorder from the early 2000s and that sounds exactly as you'd expect a commercially released ferric cassette to sound like so as a basic music player this groovy is a complete disaster but let's have her do the same analysis on treasure island dizzy just to see what the problem could be so this is the groovy and it sounds much weaker. So these are the three graphs. We've got the Groovy on the left, the Sony in the middle, and the Sony Hi-Fi separate on the right, which obviously you would never use the Sony Hi-Fi separate to load to your Spectrum, but it's the reference model here. Fidelity isn't important for computer cassette recorders because on the Spectrum, certainly, my understanding is anything below 300 hertz gets cut off, as does anything above 5 kilohertz and a spectrum loading signal is essentially two tones flipping between 1 kilohertz and 2 kilohertz that swap to represent one and zeros if we look at the graph you can see that everything else is just harmonics you see it just flips one zero one zero one zero between one kilohertz and two kilohertz and the thing is listening to those tones on the groovy they sound weak and 
unstable. Whereas on the Sony computer cassette recorder, they are much louder and more defined. And they sound more stable as well. You can look at them closely on the frequency analyzer graph and see they're actually staying in position rather than wavering slightly. And now doing the ridiculous thing of trying this tape on my Sony uh, Hi-Fi separate. And it actually doesn't perform that much better than the Sony computer cassette recorder on this tape. Cheap and cheerful cassette, limited tones, and remembering that the spectrum doesn't care about anything below 300 hertz and above 5 kilohertz. And if you look at those heat graphs at the bottom, you can see all the energy in the computer signal on the spectrum is between one kilohertz and two kilohertz. You can see the two bars. Don't get confused by those other bars. They are just harmonics created by the tones at that volume. So the computer won't pay any attention to them, but you will, you will hear them and you will see them on the graph, but the computer doesn't care. It cares about one kilohertz and two kilohertz. What have we learned from the groovy retro tape recorder? Well, some of you will be saying, Chini, we know all these modern cassette recorders are rubbish and useless. Why did you even review it? And the answer is, well, we tried that tape recorder last year and it was a perfectly viable alternative to refurbishing an old cassette recorder. No, they're not as good, the AKIs, but they work and load reliably, save reliably and have enough output to please even the most fussy of spectrum units. If the mechanism doesn't last forever, so what? At 15 quid, it didn't matter. And I was hoping this unit would also be a viable alternative just for Spectrum owners. But sadly, it's as shoddy as you like. It's terrible at absolutely everything. As a music player, the audio is tinny and is proven to lack the bottom end. The cassette heads are mono, which is no surprise because the only people who've got access to stereo heads, I think, are Tascam for their professional units. Everyone else is selling mono with very cheap mechanisms. Musically, it's just dreadful. The built-in radio is a joke. The AM doesn't work very well, if at all, when plugged into USB. And for FM, you have to have the headphones plugged in, therefore negating the fact there's a speaker on the front of this thing. Speaking of the speaker, which idiot decided it was a really good idea to put a speaker hard up against a cassette? A cassette that is magnetic media. A cassette that doesn't have any shielding because nobody would be expecting for some idiot to put a, yeah, a speaker next to it. What did it say on all your cassettes in the 80s? Do not place near loud speakers. What have these idiots done at Groove E? My, they've placed a speaker right next to the cassette. I haven't tested the built-in microphone. That's completely useless and redundant functionality. Why it's there and the money isn't spent on improving other bits of this unit, I don't know. I'm completely unable to load from it on the Spectrum. That, I suspect, is mainly down to the lack of volume output. Although, what is going on with all that interference on the Spectrum I have no idea when the unit's coming out of USB power. As a loading device for a Spectrum or other computer, the unit is also completely useless. For a start on USB power, you saw what happened. And also when it's plugged into my mixing desk, I've heard clicks and hums and weird things going on when the unit isn't playing. So there's some kind of noise going through the unit. Something's not isolated properly, but the tape Okay, it's not a Fidelity unit, but then again, neither is the units built into machines like the Plus 2. Fidelity isn't important necessarily, but a Plus 2 tape recorder loads reliably. A 464 tape recorder loads reliably. This does not load reliably. And critically, when you listen to those tones, they don't sound that stable. The mechanism in this thing is so cheap that it's actually outperformed by whatever Amstrad, Amstrad put into the Sinclair Spectrum Plus 2 in the 1980s. Think about that. And, and that just about sums it up. This unit 
is outperformed in every single way by the cheapest cassette mechanism available to Amstrad in the 1980s. Remembering the Plus 2 is a much cheaper mechanism than the 464 if you've worked on both of them, certainly on my machines. But you know what the biggest problem with this unit is? Rubbish like this is a total waste of our planet's resources. You and I use old kit and recycle our old cassette recorders and repair them and keep them going. And it's good that new stuff is available, but if you're producing absolute rubbish that is outperformed by every original cassette recorder, what is the point? And now I've got a cassette recorder sitting in my office here that I don't know what to do with because I'm going to feel guilty if I throw it away. There's no parts inside that are actually of any use whatsoever. So the first person who asks for this fetid doggy do of a cassette recorder in the comments can have it. If you see this in the shops, just run away. Just run away fast. <laughs>